Big up massive, this is Dub Architect coming at you. We're gonna go over a long overdue tutorial here on how to set up an external effect, um, whether it be a hardware one like this or something in Ableton to um, process your audio for you. So to do things like add delay. Add delay, add delay, add delay. So uh, in order to do this, um, there's kind of two ways to go about it. There's analog and digital. Right now, this is going to be a digital setup. You can do the exact same with analog. The principles are all the same. It's just the matter of hooking things up looks a little bit different. Um, so I'm using Ableton Live, but this will apply to any um, DAW, digital artist workspace. Um, basically, this is a virtual setup of what you might see on an analog mixer. I just have a sample track set up with drums, bass, uh, some keys, and a little bit of melodica. So we can show you. Uh, let's see what that sounds like. So that's totally dry right now. But we want to add some delay to that melodica, some reverb to that drum. Uh, so we're going to try to set that up right now. So. The way that we go about doing that. Uh, these over here are my returns. Um, on an analog mixer, you might uh, see this called an aux bus. Um, basically, all these right here are what we would call sends. So I can send audio from any of these individual tracks to a return, have something happen to the audio, and then this audio in the return then goes to the master track. It was how it's set up right now. Nice thing with digital versus analog is that you can set up any of these things to go anywhere. Analog is obviously hardwired, so it does what it's made to do. Um, in order to actually use an external effect, you're going to need something like this. Uh, this is a FireWire interface. You can use USB. But basically, this is something that just controls where the audio is going. Um, so I basically want to get the audio from my voice from this microphone into this space echo delay pedal right here and then back into Ableton and then get it to go out theoretically if these speakers were on that's what we're talking about or to your master recording so the first way I'll show you is with a digital effect a plug-in so right now I have the vocal track you see over here and this is my return B right? So if I have that set up, I just have a basic filter delay. It's a simple delay that comes with Ableton. On return tracks, something to keep in mind is that your your audio, your dry audio is already going to your master. So you want to make sure that your dry audio in, in an effect or um, whatever you're using is turned all the way down so that you're not doubling your vocal or doubling your signal unless that's something specifically that you're going for. Um, so actually here, I'll show you what that might sound like if you had that, I'll turn the delay all the way off. So if you turn the send up now, you can kind of hear that my voice got twice as loud. It's actually got some reverb on it from down here on this return track. Um, and that's not really what we're going for. So I'm gonna turn the send all the way off. So we're gonna make sure that the dry signals turn all the way down because we just want the effect basically. So now, if I go over here and I turn the send up to the vocal mic to this channel, to this channel, to this channel, I get this long sort of delay with a filter on it, some reverb that I put after it. And you can see that it's basically created a new track with just the effects of whatever effect the delay is having right now, and that's going to the master channel. So another way to do this, to use an external pedal, right, would require using an audio interface so that you can control how the audio, your signal flow, how the audio gets from the microphone into the delay pedal and back out the speakers or to your master channel. So right now I have this uh, return A set up. In every DAW, there's going to be some sort of plugin that allows you to route audio to an external, um, an uh, external and pick which uh, input it's coming back in. So in Ableton, it's called an external audio effect. Makes sense, right? So I'm basically telling Ableton that when I send audio to this return track, I want the audio to go out of output six on my interface, which output six 
goes into this input right here, the input on the space echo. So out of Ableton, the microphone signal comes out of Ableton into the space echo. I actually have it hooked up right now from the signal from the space echo, um, which I have, there's a, a button on the back of the space echo that allows you um, to turn off the dry signal um, for using it in a return situation like this, an effect return. So you're going to want to make sure that's off. And then I actually have that audio going into this chord chaos pad. So I can do th cool things like add flangers and phasers to it. And then that comes out. Um, and the chaos pad's a little bit weird. So I actually use a headphone out jack of it to go back into uh, my interface. But this output goes into input number six on this interface. And you can see coming back over to Ableton on my return track, that external effect plugin knows to get the audio from six. So now when I turn up the the send on this vocal mic track, you can actually you can see, actually it's see sending it's sending and returning, and returning, returning inside that return, return, return channel, 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 channel. And then that's and going then to that's master, going track. master track. track. So to so get a little get bit more advanced, advanced for advanced you, advanced. you and Ableton uh, is a little bit different from other DAWs in that the returns, you can't record straight from a return. You'd actually have to route that audio somewhere. So basically, if I just have this delay up here a little bit on my vocal mic, you guys are going to hear it because I have this master capture, which is basically resampling the master track. So it's, it's recording a live version of exactly what's going on right now. But if I were to rec record a session, these uh, and, and not have this master capture on and just record it on this actual master bus over here, you wouldn't be hearing these vocal delays because it's only returning right here and that effect's not what we call printing. You might hear people say in Pro Tools anywhere. So I can change that, I can set that up. If I create a new track here, I turn off any audio input. And on my return here, I send that, I send now, that now to now. this new track that I just created. Now, you can't hear the delay anymore because this track's not armed. If I turn the monitor on, though, oh, no, no, no. you can hear that it's doing that. So if I actually cued this track, we would just get the results of the return bus on this audio track. So, let's try to run a track real quick here. So now using what we just learned, I want to add some RE20 space that goes away. sort of stuff up, you know, feel free to comment, send me a message, reach out, hope this inspires a couple more people to try dubbing, big up, until next time, it's Dub Arctic.